ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another installment of the Pod Comics webcast. As always, I am your host, David. In this episode, I talk to Dea Muniz, who makes several comics on Tapastic. In addition, she's been doing it for such a short amount of time. I believe she just celebrated her one-year anniversary. Therefore, it's pretty impressive that in that amount of time, she's able to find 22,000 subscribers to her comic Brutally Honest. In addition to that comic, she also makes the irregularly updating Quest for Nothing and the long-form story Benedict the Grey. We talk about all these things and more in three, two, boop. Brutally Honest, Quest for Nothing, and Benedict the Grey. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, um, Quest for Nothing is kind of abandoned right now. Not exactly abandoned, but I decided to post way less often there because I was posting every week on Quest for Nothing, and uh, I didn't have time for myself, and <laughs> it was too much for me, so I had to chill out a little bit. And I decided with Moon that it was best if we just left it as, if he ever has an idea, he'll let me know, mm-hmm. and I'll do a comic, but I won't be nagging him for ideas every week like I used to. Sure, sure. I think that's fine. I mean, that's you're in my opinion, you were kind of doing too many comics. <laughs> in um, my opinion, too. <laughs> yeah. So I think the majority of the time we'll talk about Brutally Honest. Right. But the first thing I do is I like to talk about the title of a comic, and I think Brutally Honest is pretty easy to understand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think my comic is silly, but I kind of technically have a philosophy behind them. What is your like, philosophy? Um, it's just that it's not that I'm 100% honest in my comics and telling what happened, but it's I'm honest in my opinions and the way I see the world. So, like, I always talk, I'm, well, I say my Patreon page and other places that I like doing poop jokes, mm-hmm. but it's because a lot of funny stuff happens when you're pooping. <laughs> It's not to, like, I'm not trying to go for a cheap gag, like, oh, and then he farted, and that's the whole joke. It's more like everybody farts, so why can't we talk about it as, like, people, and, you know, I don't know, it's weird. I totally agree. <laughs> I, I think that we have no chance in, like, fixing racism if we can't talk about farting first. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Seriously. <laughs> We need to talk way more about farting, and then racism will finally be over. Well, we'll all be comfortable enough in our own skin to admit yeah. that we're not perfect and that everybody farts. Everybody farts. I think that's a very important thing to have in mind at all times. Everybody farts. Everybody yeah. poops. And everybody has diarrhea at some point. Yeah, and if you are so unlucky that you do not fart or poop because of some medical problem, then you should have our respect. Yeah, that's true. Right? Like, oh, well. I mean, in a way, pooping is a luxury. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Not pooping is very bad for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we dove right in there. So that's brutally honest. Yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned your philosophy. Um, does that pretty much cover it, or is there anything else you'd like to say about your philosophy? Uh well, no, that's that's about it. That's the basics for Brutally Honest because uh, the thing is, I started the series um, because I just had ideas. Like, for a really long time, I had these ideas and I, I like telling stories and I make people laugh. And I make people laugh because I'm generally um, rude <laughs> and kind of an asshole. <laughs> and somehow people like it because they know I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I just, like say stuff yeah and then i started making these comics and like the first one is me uh reacting to cinderella the new movie Mm -hmm. because like i just kept imagining myself as cinderella because she's so nice and cute and i would have been like fuck this and fuck that all the time if i was her and uh, there's a scene where she gets the dress and you know my first comic is just like barely Fairy, uh, sorry, the fairy godmother, like, bibbity bobbity booing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get the dress and I just say, holy fuck shit, it's Batman, I look hot! Like, <laughs> that's <laughs> it. <laughs> and, like, I just started doing other comics like that, so mostly 
what happened in the beginning was like something happened to me and I immediately made a comic about it. Well, um, let's see. That's, this is going to take me into the look of your comic, but you say you've only been doing this for about a year. Um, did you study illustration in university? Uh, no, I have a bachelor's in digital media design. Uh -huh. Okay, so yeah. you've been drawing for a while. Forever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so the look, you've been drawn for a long time. You, you did digital, one more time, what'd you study? Digital media design. What is that? Well, uh, here, like, in the university I attended, mm -hmm. they separate design into, like, four subcategories. So they have, like, product design. Ah, uh, like, print basic. design. Uh, like, product designs for, like, you know, chairs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then there's... Uh, um, I, I think it's graphic design, which is mm -hmm. more for print and stuff. And they have fashion design and digital media, which is more geared towards animation, um, animation, video games, uh, app development, web design, yeah, and all of that kind of stuff. Some interactive, um, like interactive applications or stuff with, uh, how do you say, do you know what's an Arduino? Uh, I've heard the word before, but I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, that kind of technology e stuff. Okay. You know? yeah, it's pretty cool. And have you, you finished, you graduated recently, right? Yeah, I graduated, like, the semester just started, and it's the first time I'm not going anymore. Okay. <laughs> I just started not going. <laughs> um, and, and are you working at all? Uh, no, not right now. I might get a job soon. I'm not sure because right now I'm looking into, like, as you know, mm -hmm. I'm looking into the possibility of um, going abroad and getting a master's degree. Um, I'm doing some online stuff right now, online courses, and I'm doing my comics, which could be considered work, technically. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Comics are work. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm not, like, I can't support myself or anything, but I get some money, so it's work. Good. Yeah, I totally I, agree. Yeah, I work. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you've only been doing it for a year, so yeah. hold on. I, I think, yeah, don't worry. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'll be fine. Okay, so the look of, of your comic, Brutally Honest, uh, if you had to describe it to somebody who had never seen it before, how would you describe it? A weird non-anime chibi mm -hmm. in black and white. <laughs> okay. So a weird non-anime chibi in black and white. Exactly. <laughs> now, I actually do know what a chibi is, but I would like you to explain. What is a chibi? Uh, okay. So when I was first introduced to anime, we just call it like super... Deformed? Like, yeah, super deformed. <laughs> and it's basically you have like a huge head and a tiny little body. Yeah. And big eyes. Big eyes. Yeah, so like the, the head to body is like a two to one. Basically. Okay. So uh, and um, yeah, it's black and white, which I think is interesting. Yeah. Okay. I'm lazy. <laughs> no, I mean, in a weird way, I it's... It's colorful. I, I don't know how I can say it. I can see the colors there. <laughs> Honestly, it's not because I'm lazy. It's because when I started making the comics, like, for Brutally Honest, I was like, okay, I'm going to take this seriously now. So I can't do something super complicated that I'm not going to be able to deliver. So let's go for black and white. Because a lot of awesome web comics I know are black and white. And they work just as fine as color web comics. So, like, I can do this and it's going to, like, save me a lot of time. So it was a business decision. Technically. Hey, <laughs> that's a businesswoman. Oh, and, and if you print things, it'll save money. It'll save money, yeah. <laughs> Not trees, though. No. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I like... Oh, one of the things I want to talk about about the look is your typography. Uh, I, I think that's one of the things that's really nice. Uh, Thank you. you. Do you have you designed a font based off your handwriting, or do you do it by hand every time? I do it by hand every time. <laughs> Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's painful. <laughs> it's, well, it's really good, though. I'm like, I'm going to save time by not adding color, but I'm going to do handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> because why not? 
my hand started hurting so bad at one point. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> huh? Have you considered making a font based off of your handwriting? I'm in too deep now. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. I don't know if the result would be as good as what you do, but if it would save time and pain. No, I don't get that much pain anymore. I got more pain when I was finishing my final project for college, because then I was drawing all day, every day, all the time, and I wouldn't sleep very much. So, <laughs> like, I had the claw thing going on with my hand. Yeah. Permanent claw. <laughs> oh, you well. Um, yeah, and... Within typography, there's like two little things that you do, which I think are really nice. One is the general, like, the, you know, like your title and your dialogue font is, is really nice. But then occasionally you'll also do sort of like um, an emotive, like when somebody like says something, you'll make like a very special sort of uh, typeface for that. Yeah. Talk about that. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> there is no, <laughs> there, there's like literally zero thought goes into that it just happens <laughs> okay it's just like you know it's a it's a feeling my hand just does it it's like that in the sketch mm -hmm. it's yeah <laughs> okay it's like that in the sketch so then when you make a comic you sketch it out on paper and then go digital no i sketch it out digitally and then i keep doing it digitally Okay. I used I used to thumbnail on paper, but then I noticed that that made zero difference, so <laughs> I stopped. Fair enough. The other thing about your comic is it it's approximately four panels, right? It's between one and six. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely seen a bunch of one panel ones. Um, and well, not a bunch, like five or six. <laughs> yeah, there's very few. I don't have that many one panel ideas. <laughs> the average is about four though, right? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And you say the maximum is six. Have you ever done anything longer in Brutally Honest? I can't remember. <laughs> I, I might have, but in general, like I, I keep, I do many comics in one PSD file. Mm-hmm. You know, and I have all of the panel options in every single PSD file. And I don't have like a standard uh, panel arrangement that's bigger than six. So if I've ever done like something with more than six panels, it was very special and out of the ordinary. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, let's shift gears. Let's move into writing. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. In some way, I think that this show is really about writing. Uh, I like to talk about looks, um, but I like to, I, I really want to find out how people write. So the way that I do that is I start with the last comic you did. It could be the last one you drew or the last one you published. Uh, That's so, the same one. <laughs> okay, so tell me about it. Same one. And if okay, you can so, go ahead. Okay, it just went up. It's um, like by the time we're recording this, it's been up for one hour. <laughs> Anyway, um, it's a comic about me being lonely. Mm -hmm. As I said, I like to be honest about stuff. So, you know, I made myself um, appropriately dramatic because I am dramatic. <laughs> and <laughs> it's basically just me, like, giving this speech about how lonely I am. And I started going, like, I am lonely. And I used to think that loneliness was something extremely bad. But now I'm so used to it, it doesn't even bother me anymore. And I could spend the rest of my life in solitude, and I'd be fine. And then Boone comes back from the bathroom, like, hey, I'm back. And I'm like, oh, my God, never leave me again. That was horrible. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the last one I did. My favorite thing about that is that you really acted it out. Yeah, that's because that's how it sounds in my head. <laughs> <laughs> It sounded like a, a Calvin Klein ad. It was exactly. It's like it was me trying to be all deep and like poetic, and so that's super not my thing. But I'm dramatic, so okay. Um, yeah, and then I go like I that like that literally happens to me. So it's because like one of, one of the I don't know a few days ago I was all like, oh, I just noticed that I haven't left the house in a couple of days. And I'm like, I'm so lonely. 
I haven't talked to anyone in a while. I could live alone forever. And then the next day I went to Boone's house and I was like, oh my God, I hate being alone. <laughs> Can you be near me all the time? I hate it. So it was kind of. <laughs> um. So we talked about your last comic. Sure. A long time ago. Uh, let's talk about the next comic you're going to make. Uh, when When will you make your next comic? Uh, uh, tomorrow -ish? You sound incredibly certain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, either tomorrow or the day after. Okay. Um, and do you know what that comic is going to be about? It's going to be a Q&A comic, and I haven't picked a question yet. Uh, um, you, you do, you've done a lot of those recently. I even recognize some of the names of the readers. Um, Ka Kale Mono? Yeah. He's, a, he's a, a guy about town. He's also a creator on Tabostic. Yeah, I get some questions from the readers. That's always cool. Um, you did, I guess there was a Q&A about putting two fandoms together, one of which was Pokemon, but I could not recognize the other one. It's Kill La Kill. What is that? That's an that's a new anime. It's really good. <laughs> okay. It's so good. Um, so when it comes to your next comic, um, do you have like a long list of of joke ideas? I wouldn't call it long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it is it written on paper? Is it uh, in your phone? Is it? In a Word document? It's in Google Keep, so I can access it on my phone or any computer or whatever. When you jot down an idea, do you just write down a couple of words, or do you write, like, more of a, a longer joke? Um, sometimes it's just um, a couple of words, but most of the time it's all of the lines. Really? So you write, like, yeah. so you get the, the idea, and then you kind of go to your phone and you write out dialogue? Yeah. Okay. Like, it, it's because when I get the idea, it's not... Um, I know that you talked to some people. I think Shan, he developed, um, he was like, oh, I have this idea, but I still don't know how to like make it happen. My ideas are just like, bam, they're here. That's it. They come my fully comics, formed. <laughs> yeah, because my comic is like way simpler than his too. Like he has way more intricate jokes. Like I, generally I get to the end of his comics and I'm like, holy crap, how did he think about this? Like how? That's awesome. And mine are more like, yeah, that happens to me, you know. Yeah, I see that. Would you call yeah, your I, Would you call yours a humor or a slice of life? I, I said it, slice of life. <clears throat> definitely slice of life. A slice um, of life. <laughs> yeah, no, I call it. I, I in all of the websites I've put it up, and I categorize it as humor, but I do consider it relatable humor. Okay. Um, yeah. Because I. As I said, I do write stuff that either happens to me or they're my thoughts. And it's not some amazing joke. It's more something like, dude, that totally happened to me. And that's my life. And I get it. Which was my reaction to some of my favorite comics. Um, Here's one that I really related to. Um, the one about shaving your asshole. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of my first comics. As I read that today, I was like, hold on, hold on, where, what was she shaving? It said, cause it said, I, I shaved a little too close to my asshole. And I was like, I'm relating to it. I'm like, okay, so, so maybe I should just ask, what were you shaving? Uh, front or the back? Yeah, the, the front-ish. Well, you are Brazilian. Yeah, but I don't do wax, because that hurts. <laughs> what do they call a Brazilian in your country? No. <laughs> oh, really? What What do women call it when they wax their asshole in Brazil? I, I don't know. I've never waxed my asshole. <laughs> I think the concept of going somewhere to, like, wax your asshole and shave your vagina is really weird. Like, here's my vagina. Now get the hair off it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be very comfortable, especially because it's a stranger. Basically, like, well, destroying your vagina it hurts. So like, I'm guessing they're only a stranger the first time. Like, once someone has like, done that, you tend to go back to them from then okay, on. But, like, here's the thing. 
you're never gonna like that person. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we know that in a couple of days you're gonna go make a comic, and uh, you're gonna are you gonna pull up your your Google Keep list of ideas and then pick one. I'm going to pull up my other Google Keep list of questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Would you mind, if, if you, do you have that handy at all? I'm kind of... Yes, yes, yes. I have my latest selection of questions. I've never even done this. I've never, ever made, because I can't. I've never made a comic that was like... <laughs> you can't. <laughs> well, have you ever read my comic? <laughs> Yeah, it's nuts, but the thing is, you get the question, and then you make a comic that answers it, but not necessarily how people expect it. I, I really liked the one that was, would you rather have telepathy or uh, telekinesis? I like yeah. that one a lot. A lot of people like that, which is cool, because I didn't. <laughs> well, okay. I think it <laughs> makes... I like the way you answered the question, because you're like, okay, so telepathy would be great, except for that you're going to find out shit about yourself you don't want to hear. Exactly. And telekinesis would only be great, because you can throw cabbages at people's heads. <laughs> yeah. I actually asked people on Twitter, like, what would be a really cool object to throw at someone else? And someone said, like, I Cab had a lettuce. I was like, winner! Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I'm glad that you said that, because I was wondering why in God's name it was a head of lettuce. Because why not? I'm all for a random. All right, so uh, let's see maybe a couple of these options that you have. We'll see. We'll try to figure out what you're going to do. Okay, so a lot of people send me questions, and right now um, I have five, no, four, no, five. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of people. I can't count. <laughs> anyway, I have a few questions that um, I separated. I've probably received a few more since I last checked, so maybe it's going to be a completely different one that I haven't seen yet. But right now, I have a question by Chris Blackmouth asked me, what's the biggest challenge of a comic maker? Mm -hmm. um, Pass. Dino. <laughs> no, I, I can do something nice with that. <laughs> 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 I have ideas. The thing is, like, I used to do comics for the now long gone Topastic Support Program. Yep. Um, God rest. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, I used to, like, when a supporter reached the milestone, they'd send me a question, and I had to answer it. It's like, they sent me whatever they wanted, and I had to answer it. So mm -hmm. it was a bit trickier, because I had to... If it was, like, a really difficult question to make a comic out of, sometimes it's, like, stupid questions. Like, it's impossible to make it into a comic, but I had to figure it out. Now I just select the ones that I can already visualize when I read the comic. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I have that one. And Crown Daimyo asked me, if you were a meme, what would it be? That's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any? Would you be uh, that, that, that bear that's like confessional bear? Or uh, maybe like a, a bachelor frog? Oh, foul bachelorette frog. I used to love that. There was a bachelorette one. There's a bachelorette frog? Yeah, it was great. I loved it. It was so true. The other questions that I'm thinking about doing, one is, what starts, oh, by Ariba, what starts a fight between you and Buck? Boone. Did you just yeah. mispronounce your boyfriend's name? Yeah, because I'm so used to people <laughs> talking about it, as if it's Bun doing the puns. But yeah, what starts a fight between um, me and Good. Um, then Leber Oidua asked me, how hardcore and intense are you? I think I you mean, could answer that with like a scale of like 0 to 10 and then just put you at like, I don't know, would you say you're like a 9.5? No, I'd probably rate the scale because I often over-exaggerate about, you know, how intense and hardcore I am. Like, I'm super hardcore, but don't put a cockroach in there. Aww. And that great. Um, and the last one I have here is from Leave Me Be Humans. Good name. Mm hmm And it's pancakes or waffles, and I think the answer to that is obvious. But pancakes? Yeah. Both. <laughs> <laughs> you, you got good timing, you got good delivery. You ever think about starting a podcast? Uh, no, I never thought about that before, but that could work. 
Um, let's see. Uh, well, the things I got left to talk about are just um, like, what do you got planned for the future? Uh, you know, like, so we talked about maybe studying abroad and, and, and printing things. So tell me, what would you like to do? Best case scenario. Got rich. Got a sugar daddy. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, I honestly, I would really like it if I could um, eventually somehow make like good money off of my comics so that I could dedicate more time to them. But at the same time, I really, really want them to stay free for everyone. You know, I don't want to charge people to read my stuff. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I personally don't like that. I want everyone to be able to read it. I really think that this kind of funny stuff is really good for like, if you're sad having a shitty day or whatever, you read some like stupid, silly comics and it makes you feel better. And I've had comments from people telling me exactly that, like, holy shit, my day was crap and you made it better because of your silly comics. And that's the best thing anyone could ever say to me because it makes me so happy. The first time someone said that to me, I cried. Like, I just wept in front of the computer, like, ah, that's exactly what I want. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Thank you. Um, but so who, really who will don't... make you happy when you are sad? Oh, there is other people making comics. <laughs> Often I ask people, like, who they like, who do they read? Who did you know before you got to Tabastic? Okay, so... Uh... Sarah Anderson, she's like basically comic goddess to me or something, because <laughs> hers were my favorite by far. Because um, she did the relatable, she does the relatable thing too. So like, um, a lot of my friends share her comics on Facebook, and everybody goes like, "Oh my god, that is so me," and me too, of course. Uh, so yeah, I've loved her stuff for a really long time, and. Also, I don't think they are on the plastic, but poorly drawn lines. Mm -hmm. Love poorly drawn lines. Um, Pigeon Year Jane, I uh, I found her stuff on Tumblr a bit before I got on on the plastic, a few months, and I loved it. Um, I can't remember any anyone else off the top of my head because uh, oh oh oh, dude, no way, yes I can. Holy crap. Okay. So, Cyanide and Happiness. Mm -hmm. I love them. <laughs> like, That's cool. So much. I think they were the first webcomic I ever read. Mm -hmm. So, like, they would be the most fangirly experience with the webcomic people. Because it goes by the time I know the people. <laughs> like... I, seriously, I used it was part of my daily routine when I was in school. I would get home, go to explosion.net, check today's comic, and then go about my day. It was, I did that every day for a long, long time. Do you watch their vines? Um, okay, I do, but honestly, what's the correct account? <laughs> I have no idea. I, I, I like, I like found their vine and I was like, holy shit, they're amazing on Vine too. And then one day someone told me like, wait, but they don't have a Vine account. And I checked and all of the ones I followed weren't verified. Hmm. I guess I've only watched Vine compilations of theirs on YouTube. So yeah. they're so great on Vine. Oh my God. All right. Well, I don't know to what extent I will uh, reveal how much of a fan girl gull. Damn it. <clears throat> All right, let's just start the whole interview over. Hi, okay. I'm David. Hello. I'm Maya. <laughs> um, well, I, I, did we cover what you want to do in the future? Do you live stream at all? No. Okay. <laughs> and we did plugs. Have... What? Plugs? What? <laughs> No, plugs means when you recommend another person's comic. Like Jenna. Oh, okay, I thought about plugs. <laughs> did you? <laughs> Sorry. Hey, when I hear plugs, that's the first type of plug I think of. That is, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> but plugs are when you recommend somebody else's comic. Oh, dude, okay, so many people. Holy shit, are you ready for a huge list? Yeah, go ahead. Because I, I, I was talking about, like, people that are very well-known. We pretty much already did it, but why don't you recommend some that you think are less well-known? Yeah, okay, so you interviewed Lay, right? Yeah. 
So Lay is awesome. I love her comics too. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. Oh, I ha- I I really like some long form comics. Like uh, Benedict the Gray is not. It's completely different from. Did my- you just plug yourself? No, I'm not going to talk about Benedict the Gray. I'm just saying, like, it's comics more on the style of Benedict the Gray than mm-hmm. Brutally Honest. Long like, form. long comics, like, you know, more stories. Stuff. I get it. I get it. What are you talking about? Who? Sorry. Okay. So, uh, Night JJ. She does, uh, I'm going to butcher this, but Les Normaux. Okay. I just assume that's yeah. correct. Yeah, I don't, I, I kind of should know French, but I don't. Anyway. Um, but yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Like I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> um, that one on there is the Black Bull of Norway. Santa Pastic. It's awesome. Okay. It's really cool. It's like this girl and she has to marry a bull. Okay. It's a, a <laughs> it's really, it's pretty cool. Kind um, of, kind of, a, kind of a cliche, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that so many stories about every webcomic is about people having to marry every a webcomic. farm animal. Oh, you know, it's very usually found on Tapestic people making comics about girls and Satan. <laughs> um, yeah. Yep, go on. Girls and Satan or the devil or something like that. Girls like Satan and me. Satan. Yeah. Like there's Satan and me, you know? I'm not 100% sure, no. Okay, I don't, I don't really read it too much. Like I read the beginning because the concept is amazing. It's like um, this girl accidentally summons Satan because the pattern on her on her head, okay, you know, is a satanic her, thing. Her Wacom then, tab? No, her no, maxi pad. Yeah, her maxi pad. Okay. Yeah, I said it super wrong. Sorry. Anyway, yeah, the the pattern on her maxi tab is a demonic summoning thing <laughs> and then she added blood yeah because she bled on it mm-hmm. and then like satan shows up and she like on the toilet like changing her mexico like um, <laughs> um what and you know things happen but i really love the concept i just never got around to reading all of it and then there's i think charlie higson does something something Heck if thursdays. I know. yeah but he has something something thursdays is that the name of it, or are you forgetting two of the words? No, it's called, called something, something something Thursdays. Thursdays. Yeah, I think you know he focuses on heck if I. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's him, right? But anyway, he focuses on heck if I know, but he also has something something Thursdays, and that's actually how I was introduced to his work, and I love it. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, no, you're right. There's a comic yeah. called Charlie Hicks and something girl. something Thursdays. Yeah, and it's a girl, and she's with a demon thing thingy thing. So girls and demons, if not devils. Yeah, are apparently kind of a cliche now. <laughs> On the past, especially. Fair enough. There's also Mary, Mary Death. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, well, you know, death, demon, Satan. It's, yeah, I get it. Girl and um, like other world, but like a dark presence. And it's kind of like yeah. a, a buddy comedy. Yeah, exactly. Calvin and Hobbes, but a girl and something evil. But that kind of, that is, that, all of those influenced Benedict the Grey, actually. Okay. Well, when are yeah. you going to get back to Benedict? When am I going to get back to, um, I'm doing monthly updates because I can't okay. <laughs> drop that fast. I but think as yeah, long as you do monthly, then it's like not abandoned. So that's fine. It's not, no, I don't want to abandon it. That's for sure. I, cause I really like it. Because it's not me, so I can actually like it, and it's not weird. <laughs> Yet the Gilly does have a streak in her hair, right? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, she doesn't. <laughs> she has an undercut. Okay. She has purple hair with a fringe and an undercut. Is the undercut a different color than the hair on top? Yeah, because it's her natural hair color. Well, that kind of counts. The hair on top is... Well, it's not a streak; it's an undercut. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a the- yeah, like- a theme in your comics is is two tone hair. Yeah, co- colorful hair. Yeah, her friend has two tone hair as well. Her mom doesn't though. No shit! I just said it's her mom. Is it a <laughs> secret? No, it's just that people weren't sure, so I was like, I'll keep them guessing. <laughs> All right. So, what are you doing for the rest of the weekend? What are you doing tonight? What are you doing tomorrow? You going out? Uh, no, tight world kind of. I'm going to go probably today. I'm going to go to um, Lynn's house. I might sleep over. I'm not sure. 
Um, I'm, uh, and then I have to, before I do my next comic, I actually have to do the, the, the plastic banner. On the front page or on your personal page? I have no. It's for the front page. It's front page. Yeah. Because I don't do banners. Okay. But anyway, uh, so the shitty thing is, and why I'm taking a really long time to finish this, is that like there are so many different things to consider for the app banner and the website banner that it's taking me forever, and I finally decided to make two different banners. Hmm. That's going to be easier than try to figure it all out. Because, like, on the website banner, you have to focus stuff on the right side of the image because on the left side, there will be text. Yes. So you don't text over the important stuff in the picture. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to consider the safe zone. And for the app, there is no safe zone. It's going to show the whole thing. But you need to add text. This doesn't seem like that big of a deal for me. It is for me, though. <laughs> Um, oh well. The, yeah, because like the, just what I when do, there's when just you should really just design one thing, uh, and then just ha- like image on the right and no text on one, and then text on the other one, and then just don't put anything important in the safe zone whatsoever. Okay, but what what I'm, what I'm doing is I have Gilly and Benedict, and they're the focus of the thing. But I wanted to add a, a little bit of information that I know, but nobody else knows about the series. Um, on the banner, just because I, re- I really wanted to do it. So what I is it? Jupiter, uh, well, the rays are stationed in Europa, Jupiter's moon. Not Io, Io, but Europa. Yeah, Europa. Yeah. Um, because I- I'm a nerd. Okay, yeah, I know the moons of Jupiter. Oh, yeah, but it's because Europa has an actual chance of harboring life there's a chance i don't think it's that good it has actual water okay. nasa is actually sending a mission there to check fair Which enough is, so like, but but why why does this have to be on your banner i think you should because I you're making really want it. you're making <laughs> your life harder i know i always do that but like i already drew it out no so you don't I'm always doing... do that because when you made a comic you decided to make it black and white <laughs> and then I decided to write everything by hand. Yeah. <laughs> that is, I'm going to make my life easier, but also a lot harder. <laughs> have you ever made a comic and when you're like almost done? Because you were like, I really need to have an idea and I really need to, to make a comic because I need to post it tomorrow or something. Like, oh, I, I need to, I need to, okay, let's do it. And then you have an idea and then you stick with it. And when you're like almost done after spending like a really long time in it, you look at it and like, oh, this is shitty. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody does that. You just, you get, yeah. and when you get close to done, you're like, well. It's too late now to, like, oh, let me scrap this. Because, like, there's another thing. I think that's this is true for most comic artists. Like, uh, we are way harder on ourselves than our audiences are sometimes. Especially when you publish mainly, like me, mainly on a place like The Plastic, where everybody's nice. Everybody's nice, it's true. Everybody's nice. You don't get hate. You don't get people going like, you should kill yourself. Nobody does that there. So, um, especially when you're on a place like the Pasek, and, and also they understand your problems, because m- most people publishing there aren't making money, <laughs> like, either at all, or very little, very little money. But, like, they get it when you say, like, oh, it's going to be monthly, or they don't go like, you should upload more. There is not many complaints. So the thing is, I was like, okay, so I think they will like this enough. You know, I don't like it. Like, I know I can do better. I know it. I know I can do better. But I don't want to leave them like a month with nothing. I'd rather post this, which is mildly entertaining, (laughs) I think. And it looks pretty because it took me forever. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) So, like, I'm going to post it and I'm just going to... Like, okay, lesson learned. Let's let's think about it more before we start making it. Well, keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> All right. Well, Dea, yeah. keep on being you. <laughs> keep on being you, the Damon. <laughs> All right. Well, take it easy, okay? Bye. Good luck today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye-bye. If you're wondering what that last remark was about, I was on my way to go see my accountant to pay my taxes.
Another thing I wanted to mention was that um, I got some feedback about the sound quality being a little bit low, well, the volume level being a little bit low in the podcast, and so I'm experimenting to bring that up. Um, let me know how I'm doing. Next, I'm going to plug myself, but I think it only fair that I should plug Dea first. Therefore, if you have some extra money laying around, you can go over to Patreon and support Dea Muniz. And if you have some extra money laying around after that, you can go over to Kickstarter and you can support me in printing my book. All right, so next episode will be with Brian Gordon, who prints Foul Language Comics. Those comics can be found on Go Comics or on his website, foullanguagecomics.com, also Facebook. Until then, goodbye! Goodbye!